Manakam, Krishna Mackenzie, another round of exploring community gardens in Oroville. This place is Aura Mode, so Aura Mode is a sort of unlikely um, suspect for this uh, type of work to happen, but somehow the, a small circle garden has emerged here with a jackfruit planted in the middle which is a common feature of these little circle gardens. These are these circle gardens, I wouldn't say they're the, necessarily the best module for like a, a nice production, but as an introduction to this type of work, circle garden is really, you know, really easy. You put a fruit tree in the middle, in this case it's a jackfruit, then you have papaya, pineapple, the tapioca, and a few other things here, um, which are the sort of medium duration plants. And then they have in here some cluster beans and they have some spinaches and uh, you know I think this is a this is like a first step for them and you can see how much land there is here there's so much space our our value of the earth has been defined by um, a certain sense of aesthetic and not by you know a primary need which is which is the, the food that we're eating. So this is a nice first step in that direction in this community. So I'll take you to the next place. Come, let's go. This is a community which is uh, started by Alok. Shamefully, I don't know the name of it, but it's nearby discipline. And it's one of the most exciting projects. The reason being is Alok's a, you know, a very, inspired sort of entrepreneur and he's uh, I think he's got the whiff of this being very um, you know huge potential there and he's ready to act you know people are ready to act and do it those are the people who are going to make the change so he's like said well look we got all these bananas but it wasn't doing very well so what we did is we came in and we cut them all back and then we started to compost everything and then what we've been doing is we've been planting bottle goods and um, and pumpkins in between so that will make like a if you see over there there are more here and there are more here and here and that will make like um a ground cover in between we will um probably we also come in here with some tapioca a bit later look this pumpkin's doing really well we've planted that just some 12 days ago it's very fast or 10 days ago and these bananas will pick up because we give them like a solid compost in. And then next what, uh, what Alok did is he, with his, um, with his team, and um, he, um, he's, he's made this, uh, this bed here. And the bed is done in really the best way. There's like a, a big trench and it's full of bananas and sticks and, and, and weeds and leaves. And in here we put in uh, sweet potato. Now this, um, the next thing I think we're gonna do here is do wing beans on the border. And I think we had said to do um, cucumbers in, the, in this banana section. And then they're gonna do another bed here and another bed here and probably start putting tapioca on this bed and around here. And then it looks ready to do this side as well. You know, it's really, really, really wonderful. It's really wonderful. What's good is he does have like a little team. So he has Shanks, who is a, who is a fellow musician friend of mine, a wonderful jazz guitarist, and he's like really into it. So he lives here and he's like helping run it. Alok's into it and he also has his staff as well. And everyone's aligned. I think that, I mean, that's really the blessing is that a place like is, is really ready to do it. And, um, I'm so excited because it's going to go on, it's going to move really fast here. We meet once a week and then they also do their own work. But it's, um, it's a great, and I think Alok also sees that the role of this place is not only for him and it's, I don't think he's thinking of it in terms of money that it'll make, but I think he's seeing it as a new sort of, um, you know, a new sort of basic resource, um, a basic uh, need that every sort of little, corner community collection of communities will need to get the food so everyone will have bananas you know and pumpkins and bottle goods and sweet potatoes and it warms my heart so much i'm going to take you to the next place so this is surrender and in surrender there is um you know you can see this is a it's a whole community of oroville 
and um, old means going back 20 plus years. And again, this is not a critique to anyone, but I think uh, our design of buildings has never considered really, well, what's the relationship with the land and food? So here what we did is we took out the lawn and we put lemongrass and bananas and tapioca and eggplants and New Zealand spinach, which is doing really nicely, and uh, chicken spinach, and there's some cucumbers coming up. And there's some edible weeds like this um, comelina and um, there's some um, Japanese, uh, no, what's that, Brazilian joy weed and a few other bits and pieces and curry leaf and papaya. This garden will take time, will take time. We need some basil in here, we need to start to see that it's not so easy just to come in here and cut, you know, and prune trees and stuff because, you know, people have different opinions about landscaping but in a in a shady garden like this more pineapples could come more spinaches could come basil could come maybe some yams would work well but it needs that sort of you know step by step you know just letting it become part of our our, our daily experience in the back there's some other things happening I'll, I'll show you there come So this is the back garden of Celine's house and I would say this, the, the heavy roots of these trees are definitely a challenge but the, you know you've got banana, papaya, chicken, spinach. It's a while since I've been here to tell you the truth, at least uh, I don't know maybe three weeks and I think what's needed is probably that we just be a bit more selective with the plants that we, that we grow, maybe focus on spinaches you know and maybe pineapples. Um, shade tolerant plants like turmeric and um, as I say the yam and, and pineapples that's uh, those things could work better here and I think that's a part of any process of doing a garden like this is that you're going to start to discover the you know the, the limitations with the soil fertility the limitations with the roots of other trees and shade and trying to try to find out you know how to make that work but basically the infrastructure is there, which is great, you know, the trenches and it's been filled with organic matter and, you know, something positive could happen. Come, let's go over this side. So I would say this garden is doing a little bit better because it has more light, you know. But this pumpkin is coming out nice here, some cucumbers, the tapioca, the banana obviously looks quite healthy. And um, this was a lot of fun to do with this garden. This took us like a couple of hours and we were like six people and we boom, we just like dug the trench, filled it with organic matter and planted it out. Um, there's some aubergines coming up here and um, tapioca, papayas. This bottle gourd is doing well. The ramfall that was already here is like doing much better now. And um, this lemon also looks really, or this is a, I don't know what this is, a, maybe a, a, a pomplinus, maybe this is the pomelo. If we go down here, and look what's happening in here. see bananas and tapioca and um, potalaka again it's a, it's a process these gardens you know it's not I think to understand that this this road back to nature is not just this a linear ABC it's a it's step by step uh, planting things not working replanting discovering you know how to how to you know how to use these plants, how to love this experience more. And these people, Li Fong and, and Serene, they're really in that process. I think um, this Tuesday we'll be back here and we'll be planting again with them. But this is surrender and uh, the, the goodwill and the openness and the willingness to, to start using the land in a different way is very visible. And that is obviously the first step. 
So I'll take you to the next place. So here we're in Humanscapes, which is a, actually quite a very, I find it a very interesting housing project. I think they've used this some um, compressed rammed earth brick wall, uh, mud walls and um, you know there's a lot of uh, a lot of consideration has gone into the architecture but again and again it's not a critique um, there's no point in just criticizing people it's not about that it's about how we move forward there's not been a consideration of our land use and our most essential need which is food you know, food even comes before housing, actually, because without food, you're not there. So there's been no thought about that on a collective level. And again, this isn't, there's no finger to point because it's really our collective um, narrative that has to change. And that's what these gardens represent, a shifting collective narrative. And here you have one, uh, one French guy called Cyril, uh, who has been um, trying to do stuff. I think he's pretty much on his own and he's been planting some bananas and papayas. In this, there, there's some beds he's made here. You can see there's a trench and a bed and there's a trench and a bed and a trench and a bed. So he's actually created quite a good infrastructure and then he has some papayas and some sweet leaves, some tapioca. Um, over here there's some bananas and there's a, there's a fruit tree growing here. I think there's a lemon that he's got from solitude that still looks kind of okay here. More papayas. Probably he doesn't quite have enough support from people, you know, to, to make this happen. But imagine, I don't know how many people are living here, 20, 30, 40 people. Imagine everyone comes and does half an hour in a week. Imagine those are sort of collective agreements because we recognize that this is something that has to shift on a collective level. Everyone says, okay, half an hour a week I do it. And we, people would be eating from this land. Maybe not everything, but that's not the point. The point is to shift um, sort of an awareness about this subject because that awareness does would shift, make a, you know, in, in influence other decisions that we make regarding food, thus regarding ecology, thus, thus regarding pollution, even education, again, architecture. It, because it's on the essential level, nutrition is really, a uh, foundation aspect of everybody's life and if you change the foundation you'll change every other aspect of humanity so i say hats off to Cyril for trying to do this you know he's done quite a lot actually on his own i think maybe his wife victoria has been helping him as well um when the rains come i think it's going to get a lot easier for him but uh, we'll be back here to see what else he does let's go to the next place So now we are in Arati, which is uh, another um, residential community in Oroville. And the limiting factor here is definitely shade. You know, you see like all these huge trees. And um, yeah, the shade definitely defines things. However, there are positives here. The one very big positive is that the concept of returning organic matter as the primary you know, the primary technique in revitalizing the soil has been really well understood. Now <laughs> you guys have done the trench. This is Shalini and uh, Devon's house, and they've really done beautiful trenches, return organic matter. They've got a couple of papayas going, and probably they're going to plant more things in here as it goes along. I think there's another drumstick they've got going there. And as you walk along this way, you can see. So they've got another couple more little gardens going here. I think they've got a ram fall in there and some curry leaf, some more papaya, some bottle gourd. Um, and then they've got a little, then they've got a little spinach section over here where they're, they're trying to, um, they're trying to grow the, they're exploring how to grow these, these basically they're weeds. So this is, this is very interesting in my eyes. Um, you have this, um, wild amaranth here um, which is you know it's just it's a crazy plant it just grows everywhere you have this potalaca which is high in omega-3 this is the brazilian joy weed this is the sartanakira and they have the, the ponangani they have a sweet potato 
So they're actually already doing really, really well. And to fill these four squares and even maybe more of this area until the fence with all these spinaches and to meet your family's needs of spinach is something completely feasible, you know. When they start to have that understanding and seeing, well, actually the great thing about these plants is they do grow in the shade, you know, semi-shade, they're doing really well. And look, they've got a drumstick there, they've got another papaya there, and probably, you know, a few other things will emerge. So, I say that, you know, we have to start with where we're at. So communities such as this, they have been defined by the, um, you know, the landscaping that's been done over the last 10, 20 years, which is big, now big trees. But within that uh, limitation, there's still a lot of scope to explore all these, uh, you know, local spinaches, the, the, the edible weeds, and again, plants that, that love the, that the tolerant of the shade. And, uh, you know, hats off to these people because they really are they're really, really trying to do it. And, and I think that another benefit is with Rosalini is that she's Tamilian. So she has a cultural heritage. She has a cultural knowledge. And that, uh, you know, that's from the grandmother and the mother and the society. And so there's an affinity to that. And that is something that we also have to share enormously. So as these are community gardens, the potential to share this knowledge is, is uh, you know, is really alive. So I think that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for walking around with me. The next gardens is a visit to Sada and a couple of other friends in uh, in another side of Orville, on the Quilapalium side. And that's going to be very interesting because some of those gardens are more senior gardens. They're more long-term established gardens, but they really represent... Um, you know, a very serious effort over a longer period of time. So please subscribe to this channel. Please hit the notification bell and value our partner. Give them a big thumbs up, Tube Tumby, because they are doing an awesome job in bringing all our Oroville communities to uh, YouTube channels together under one umbrella. Thank you very much, and we will see you soon.